Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. Hi there, Lloyd Macedo. It's me and you from LloydMacedo.com. Who's Lloyd Macedo? Think Puzzle Branding. All right. Um, I just thought this, this video would really help those people who are depressed or who have lost their jobs or going through financial tough times. I mean, uh, you, you know, when times are good, we enjoy a lot. But when times are challenging, it's like one thing after another. It's, it's like uh, everything comes crashing down. And um, when you go through a tough time, if the problem can get sorted out easily, fine, you're back to, you know, back to normal. But men, in many cases, sometimes you just, you know, are looking for a break. You're looking to solve the issue, the problem, but it just doesn't seem to happen. And especially during the COVID crisis, I think many of you have gone through a lot. Uh, there, I know personally know some people who have been without a job for two years, so it can really take its toll on you. So in this video, I'm, I'm giving you 15 steps, okay, that have helped me uh, during my time when I was penniless, homeless, and depressed, okay? Uh, I went, it, it was a terrible period of in my life. So I thought these 15 points would help. Uh, these are very practical, doable points, okay? And uh, the last three are taken from one of my friends. She is, a, um, she is someone who I really uh, kind of look up to. She is my age. She is a Keralite girl uh, who is based in Dubai. Uh, I'll just call her Rads. Um, incredible woman, okay? She went through, I think, three to five years of failure after failure after failure. And uh, she refused to give up, okay? Even though she was very beautiful, even though she was like very attractive and talented, she could have taken so many other options like sugar daddy or she could have taken a boyfriend or she could have taken easy money. She refused. She stuck to her guns to work you know, where character was concerned to do what is right. And, you know, when you push yourself to do only what is right, it's the road is tougher. And, you know, she went through times where she only had a bowl of rice. Just imagine a bowl of rice to survive for the whole day. And, you know, there are days where uh, she didn't even have any food to eat. So how did she go survive? So in this video, I've mentioned these 15 points. Go through them. See if they help you. And, um, you know, I'll the article if you want to read it and uh, uh, you know save it and if it helps anyone please forward it to them okay so this is my way of trying to encourage you don't uh, don't be heartbroken don't give up and these are the 15 points the first one is exercise daily uh, by exercise i'm not talking of do some fancy workout or wear these expensive clothes or go to a state of the art gym by exercise i'm talking of some kind of movement some kind of movement. It can be just five minutes. It can be 10 minutes. It can be a walk. It can be just a few push-ups. It can be just stretching. Anything. Do some kind of physical activity because when you exercise, you know, it releases chemicals in your brain, in your body, and that kind of helps you. Always remember, if you're physically fit, your chance of recovery, creative thinking, productivity is much better. And people like to deal with people who are physically fit rather than, you know, fat and depressed and all that. So, one is exercise daily. Number two is, please breathe. You know, when you are stressed and when you're under pressure, you don't breathe properly. We shallow breathing, especially if you see someone who's angry, he goes like this. But someone who is like peaceful, it can be Sadhguru, it can be some uh, guy who's meditating. You just look at them, they are, they're breathing so beautifully. In fact, uh, when you're sick, Okay, when you're sick or when you go to the hospital, what do they do? The first thing they put is an oxygen mask for you to breathe. So learn to breathe. And uh, you can Google search this Win Hof, W-I-N-H-O-F, Win Hof method, where he breathes very deep, keeps it inside, exhale. And if you if your body is not used to breathing, you'll feel a little dizzy, which is normal. So just start slow. Uh, a simple technique that I give you here is breathe 10 times per day. If 10 is too much, start with 2 or 3, but push to 10. And I used to 
push myself up to 15 minutes 15 minutes breathing because it really helps you clear your mind and feel fresh breathing is very very important third one is i used to meditate plenty of times um by meditation, I'm not saying close your eyes and say, Om, Om, and pff, this all, I don't know. By meditation, simple chair, just sit down, just close your eyes. Don't, don't say, I will not think. By you saying not think means you're still thinking. Just close your eyes. Just, that's it. And I used to keep a stopwatch with a soft alarm clock that would wake me up. Uh, after five minutes, ten minutes. And, you know, I literally push myself to do this for one hour a day. You know, sometimes half an hour split or 15 minutes, four times. One good uh, group that I'd recommend in UAE or the Middle East or even in India, it's SSY, Siddha Samadhi Yoga. Um, they teach you these techniques. They help me for free when I didn't have the money. It's a very highly recommended group, Siddha Samadhi Yoga. Uh, it's very cheap, very affordable. They give you uncooked food uncooked means not raw meat and all that we are talking of fruits and vegetables that really heal your system that helped me a lot also siddha samadhi yoga number four is like when i'm under pressure or when i'm depressed i take plenty of naps plenty of naps. like for example if you actually see here see uh, my bedding is here you can see this uh, the reason my this is like my office the reason i keep my bedding here is whenever i I feel too much of a headache or stress. You know, sometimes the clients can be a real asshole here. Yeah. So what I do is before any important task, like even before this video, I give myself 15, 20 minutes nap, just sleep. It really resets your system. And the more naps you take, it's really healthy. In fact, I know many politicians, many actors, actresses, or people are under tremendous stress, like business people, they take plenty of naps. Short naps, 15, 20 minutes, don't go more than it makes you sluggish. Point number five is write on a sheet of paper. Very powerful technique. Not, um, I know many of us like to type and use um, smartphone and all that. But I would highly recommend use a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. And the reason for writing is, you know, your full attention is on your fingers. And, you know, my handwriting has become very bad. I don't even know how to write running handwriting or alphabets. It's like when I'm trying to write R and all that and T and all that. It, it comes like I'm scribbling. Because we have lost the art of writing. When you write, it actually forces your mind to think. So write, have a diary, like a black book, and use that exclusively for you. I used to keep that for very many years, a black book where I used to write down my, my thoughts, my ideas, my depression, any problem, empty your mind, write. So always write on a sheet of paper. Point number six, which you'll be shocked, but sex. Sex helps a lot. Let's, you know, Here's the thing. Let's not act like children, okay? Sex, absolutely, it relaxes you. Now, if you don't have a sexual partner, masturbation definitely helps, okay? Uh, but if you can get a partner, that's great, okay? A non-emotional partner, because if you have emotions, then that's another idea. But if you have a wife or emotional partner, then obviously you don't need to search for a, a fuck buddy, as they say. Uh, but if in case you don't have that, then paid sex is another solution. But be careful here. Use precaution. Use, you know, be safe. Don't end up getting AIDS or something. Sex is very relaxing. Okay. It's very, let's face it. Even if you can get a nice sexual massage also with a happy ending, it's great. Now, if you're a female, obviously, maybe your, your options are slightly limited. But sex is really therapeutic it helps you relax and for me like I, i've made it very open and clear that i masturbate almost uh, before i used to do it oh a crazy number of times today i do it once maybe once in every two three days or something it's it's not that maybe because after my surgery i i don't feel the need to do so many but even though i have a wife even though we have sex not very frequent it's once a week or something i i'm not too hyperactive in terms of sex now for me earning money turns me <laughs> yeah, much more but sex is very therapeutic okay uh, there are some people who are hyperactive who have to have sex every day when i was in my 20s i needed to have sex you know at least six times a day i think it was crazy man but today it's slightly less maybe reduce sexual libido or whatever or maybe my uh, age whatever but sex is good okay if you want more questions sex i can make another video and we can talk about it and see we need to talk about it because this is part of us so let's not act like <gasps> sex oh you know point number seven is healthy food we tend to eat chocolates we tend to eat 
uh, fast foods. We tend to eat cheap food. When I didn't have any money, I used to actually eat mummy noodles because I didn't have any money. Okay. Uh, however, it's recommended you eat healthy food. By healthy food, it's fruit, vegetables is always good, quick energy. But if you are like me, you couldn't afford food, you would eat whatever you get. I used to eat mummy noodles because it was the cheapest. I would get food, rice and some chicken and french fries from cafeteria when I didn't have food. But if you can cook your own food, eat healthy food. Remember, one boiled egg is amazing. Uh, freshly cooked food is always great. Okay, if someone can help you, if you don't have money, that's all. But remember, one boiled egg, all the multivitamins, fresh milk, always pretty good, but boil it. Okay, uh, number eight is do play some games. Uh, by games, you can either have physical games, but don't don't go into something hardcore like uh, rugby or something. And I used to play these online games that used to help me relax a little bit. But don't be too addicted and don't play too much of it. It is only to get your mind to relax for a few minutes. Okay, the games are pretty good. Number nine is always stay busy. The more busy you are, the better it is. Because sitting down, you know, when I didn't have a job and I didn't have anything, sitting in a room alone with nobody, it can be very depressing. And those days, I was to actually think of suicide and you know, hang myself and kill myself. That's, you know, so, but when you're physically doing some work, physical, remember, physically doing or you have a project or you have some work, um, then your mind will be at least kept occupied. And something is better than nothing. In fact, I used to even uh, volunteers, uh, volunteer to do work for free because that would keep me busy. And people, when they would see me and they would know my situation, I think they, you know, they really wanted to help me out. So that that is pretty good. Number 10 is use emotions, whatever, happiness, sadness, anger, disgust, surprise, fear, all these emotions, six emotions, use them to drive you and not bring you down. See, like, for example, when you cry, you can either feel, oh, poor me, and this and that, or you can cry to empty your sadness, clean your face, and fight it out again. So always use emotions to empower you and make you stronger, not weaker. Even anger. For me, because I was sexually molested as a child, I was raped, I went through so much of torture, I had so much of anger, bitterness inside. But I use this to propel me towards doing better, not propel me towards getting into smoking, drinking, drugs, and, you know, bad things. Number 11 is be cold and calculative. Uh, you need to think like a businessman. Nobody's your friend. Nobody gives a fuck about you. So you cannot be too attached to anything or you cannot be too emotional about anything. If I had to charge someone money, uh, I would definitely charge. If I had to charge someone a little bit extra where I can make, even if it's a cute little, you know, girl or kid or but business is business, okay? You need to be cold and calculative. And remember, survival of the fittest. So if you're going to be a saint, you're not going to survive. There are so many times I literally charged people whom I knew were going through the same thing they were going through me, but they wanted my service. I would charge them money. I charged my family members. I didn't give a fuck. You need to be cold and calculative if you have to survive. If you can be a good person and a good uh, hero and survive, great. But remember... In the business world, there are no good guys, okay? Point number 12 is focus on working and getting a solution and not on the problem. We'll, you'll always face problems. So when anyone would bring me a problem, I'd say, fine, this is a problem. What is the solution? That's it. Don't focus, oh, shit, man, this, what will I do? Fuck, yeah, what will I do? And No, this is a problem. Good. Find a solution. We work out a solution. You don't know what is the solution? Ask someone. You... Someone doesn't know, try something. Keep getting a solution because focusing on the problem is not going to help you. Point number 13. Now, these, the last three points are taken from my friend who I told you was a model. Last three points. The first one, I asked her, how did you manage when you went through these three to five years where you didn't even have food to eat? Just imagine, you're talking of a model. You're talking of a person who experienced the highest of highs where she went through you know, uh, business loss or whatever. She said, every day I would get up in the morning. The first thing I would take my diary and write down three things I was grateful for. It would be my good health. It would be, I'm able to drink coffee. It would be, I'm with my pets. You know, she had cats. She still has. So i would be three things that I'd be grateful for. There are many people who had cancer, who didn't have families, who were, uh, went to earthquakes, hurricanes, food, famine. So many people were worse off than me. 
So I was just focusing on the blessings and that would jumpstart my day and make me feel, live a life of gratitude. See, there are plenty of things we can be happy about. Let's not focus on only sad things. Beautiful point that she gave her. Every day she would write down three things she would be grateful for. Okay. She kept a gratitude kind of journal. Number four, 14 is she realized quickly nobody cares. Okay. So instead of being bitter about it, she accepted the fact nobody cares. Okay, fine. How can I offer them value? That value in such a way that they would care. Now, remember this, she being a girl and that also a beautiful, attractive woman, many people, many men would say, you know, I, I'll take care of you. If you take care of me, you know, indirectly they offer. But she, she understood that is the nature of men. Okay. Now, obviously she could be bitter and cry and say, why men are like this and all that. So she politely told them, uh, I understand what you're trying to imply, but this is not my style. Can we focus on me giving you value in terms of business professionally where you can offer me, you know, uh, charges for my services? Okay. Like, let's say maybe marketing or branding or, uh, you, you, you know, uh, giving you data or for research and all that. So these very same men, uh, you know, they will be like, okay, fine. Uh, I try to get her to bed or whatever. And they know that it didn't work out. So they say, fine. Okay, let's let's keep it business. Let's keep it professional. And I'll tell you, she always focused on not taking it too personally. And this takes a lot of strength of character, substance and maturity. I'll tell you, I know so many girls who will be like, why men are like this? Oh, what the world is like this? She, she, she literally used to handle men. Imagine someone like a salivating dog in heat. Oh, I dive in. She used to handle them and put them in their place. And very soon, they realized, shit, okay, this is not a woman who's going to get intimidated by me. And they got back in line. And last but not least, point number 15 is uh, she dressed to impress. See, there are two points in this. Dress to impress. She always wore the best of the best. She dressed him, even though she was going through a tough time, and she communicated to express. Dress to impress, communicate to express. Impress, express. So she dressed in a way that was like, wow. I'll tell you, she always had the aura. Wherever she would walk, people would just turn their head and look at her, even when she went through tough times. So dress to impress, but communicate to express. So where she would communicate, it would be very clear, very concise, very calculative, very competitive. She knew how to sell herself. So these are the 15 points which uh, I thought would really help you. And these are the points that have helped me also when I was homeless, penniless and went through depression. And uh, today, if I'm in a far more better place, it's because of these 15 points. So let me know which of these points really help you. If you have any questions, any doubts, uh, well, you can comment down below. And do share this if you feel it will help anyone. Okay, this is me signing off. Guys, take care. And uh, I would give a special thanks to my friend that she gave me these three points. Okay. You guys take care. It's me saying. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there. But bam. Loy Macedo is the best. 